Good morning. Welcome to my dark video. Dark. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. Hello. My name's Starthinker uh, with the Valentine Goose channel. Um, it is dark. I came. It's November 3rd and I just got out of work, uh, but the polls don't open uh, for like half an hour so i thought i'd sit here and make one of my videos um i didn't realize it would be this dark though but i'm gonna forge ahead um so yeah i got notes uh i've been trying to find a place to do a new hunt and the problem is um i i don't trust places anymore i don't you know this park that i'm sitting in floods almost yearly and in 19 19 <laughs> in 2007 i believe it was um it flooded so deep that like it covered you know the little uh camping not camping the little picnic places with the roofs over it i mean it covered it went over the roofs you couldn't even see the roofs it was that deep um you couldn't see that it was just literally a lake and there was no playground equipment nothing even the lamp poles barely stuck above the water <clears throat> so yeah this park flooded big time um, and I'm looking, I, actually where I'm parked, I'm on a hill, I'm looking at these streets, these streets are all empty, and there's just like, there's driveways, there's steps, and all the houses are gone, because once you have a hundred year flood, you're not allowed to rebuild there, so they literally wiped out this whole neighborhood that goes about three blocks back, and it's just a grid of streets, because no one can build there now, uh, it's going to be a hundred years if, if another flood doesn't occur in 100 years, that's when they allow building again. But, yeah, so the city just kind of took that over, made it parkland, but it's got a grid of streets in it. Uh, it's just kind of eerie. When you drive through it, it's really eerie because there's still, like, landscaping and stairs and sidewalks and driveways. There's just no houses, and it's, it's kind of a ghost town. I always wanted to walk through with my metal detector. Um, but, yeah, just trying to find a place to put something is a challenge and I was asked last night and I didn't answer it because I I don't like to answer in private but <clears throat> since this is an official channel um, I was asked how long did I think my hunt would last and and how did I figure that out and you know I hid my token first and then I went to look for real world uh, clues I could use um, and I gotta tell you I don't want to discourage anybody but <laughs> I wanted to make sure all my real world locations lasted at least 50 years. And um, not that I thought my hunt would last 50 years, but I didn't think my hunt would ever take off. I thought maybe I'd sell two or three books a year. No one would ever hear about it. It would just sit out there, you know, kind of like the whistle pig. You, people are kind of working on it, but I bet you it's fewer than 100, you know, probably 20 people working on it, actively working on it. Um, it's just not a market. <laughs> and at the time I wrote my book, um, it was coming off the Michael Stather hunt. And, uh, I'd heard about Forrest Fenn, but I never even looked into it. I knew about the poem. Uh, I think like the first person had died and was in the news and that's how I'd heard about it. Uh, but I just did it for fun and I did it for the people of Denver. Basically, I never thought it would ever would ever go out there so i did think it would last a long long time um and i took contingencies because a lot you know I, like i said i probably i hid the token first and i spent maybe a year decided on what to use for the real world locations and <laughs> it was a challenge and uh i know like there's one location in, in every location i've thought 30 to 50 years at least um, probably going on to 100. And I thought these locations will always be here. And of course, one park got tore up and it freaked me out. And there's there's other places. I mean, anything's possible. The, the Columbus statue was torn down. Um, you know, these are things you couldn't have predicted that, that long ago. Um, there is a place, uh, there is one of them that's in an industrial area and it's on a corner. And all I could think about was like, Man, what if it, it's winter and it's slippery and a truck misses this corner? It's going to take out this monument easily. and uh, Or a car or something or an accident. Um, 
so I would I did worry about these things, but I had a contingency, and the contingency was that now we have an internet, and um, most of these things are already on the internet. Um, the things there were a lot of things that weren't on the internet at the start of this hunt, and they are now because because of this hunt, and um, and I did go to each location and just take a plethora of pictures, and uh, it's like. I just, that was my backup plan. If anything happened to any of the locations, when they started tearing uh, one of the parks out, um, I went through my pictures and I made sure, you know, first I went there and I like totally documented the whole park. I mean, I even parked my van on the sidewalk. I had an old uh, caravan, like one of the first boxy ones. And I stood up on the roof and I was taking pictures from my roof. To, <laughs> if anyone asked me, I'll just say I'm working with the park restoration project. But nobody even questioned me driving up on the sidewalk to take aerial photos <laughs> of this park. But um, yeah, I got lots of pictures. So if anything ever disappeared completely and it was major and it wasn't out there, I was just going to post these pictures. Um, so yeah, that, that was the permanence I looked for. And I was looking for permanence now. And like I said, I'm in this park. And there's not a thing here that wasn't underwater. Um, I was at a park Saturday, one of my favorite parks. Um, and I haven't been getting out much because I've been so sick and I'm in so much pain. And I got to this park and I tried to walk around. And there's this big tree in the middle of this, like, circular driveway. And I've just always known it to be there for years and decades. It's always been this big tree. And it was struck by lightning. I mean, it was completely peeled to the bark. You could see it was burned on the inside. Um you know had that tree been used <laughs> first of all i would never use a tree but um i think agk you know they hid it behind a tree i just don't see permanence in trees and you know who knows what's going to happen and i was looking at park equipment and um <clears throat> i think i mentioned this in one of my other videos i was gonna there was a trail that goes under a bridge and i thought oh there's so many nooks and crannies under this bridge but then like i'd gone to denver and came back and they were sandblasting this bridge because they were refurbishing it. Um, you know, this was after the big bridge disaster in Minneapolis. And they were like, they literally closed a bunch of bridges in Mason because they were like, oh, these are subpar bridges. And they went through and they redid them. And, you know, had I had something there, it, I don't think it would have survived the sandblasting and the, and the painting and stuff. Um, so I'm... When I do a hunt, I'm looking for permanence. And yeah, 30 to 50 years is what... I know that sounds ridiculous because it is. But that's what I was looking for with my monuments and the place where I hid the token. And if I did it again, that's what I would look for again. Is some place where I could put that there and say, it's going to be there for 50 years. Um. Oh, yeah. So the photos um, and... Like I said, I tried to plan this hunt for every every kind of possible thing. And one of the things I knew would happen was sharing on the internet, and it's already happened a lot. And, um, you know, there's a lot of these places that are pictured now in forums and stuff. Um, and, yeah, the, the, the only other than... I don't think any other ones are in danger. It's just like I keep thinking about that one on the corner. I'm like, what if someone slides through this corner because it's... That was the most common accident you would see is someone trying to make a corner and slide through the corner and go up on the curb. And, you know, that was, that's the one I'm worried about. But even so, that's a monument that's going to be there, I think, at least 30 or 50 years. Um, so, but yeah, I, I photographed everything. So that's my backup plan. And on future hunts, I don't know, like so many of these, I call them popcorn hunts. So many of these popcorn hunts, <laughs> no offense but that's just what it seems like there's all these hunts coming up and they're gone within a week two weeks what did agk last couple months i don't even did it last a couple months <laughs> and the guy that found it they think i don't know i haven't seen the interview yet but they think he had solved it like within the first week and the trail was closed so it's just uh one of those things <laughs> but um yeah i think that's a good term for popcorn hunts uh if your hunt lasts over a year, that's that would be my that would be my cutoff. If your hunt lasts over a year 
it's not a popcorn hunt. So, and I'm old school. I mean, I did my hunt old school. I based it off hunts that took place in the seventies and eighties and nineties and not current hunts. So, I mean, I just, I think of mine as old school. So there's a lot of ciphers and stuff in it and a lot of things you got to hunt for a lot of steganography. Um, anyway, yeah, other, I got, I actually made notes at work so I could remember everything. Um, I do online hunts. Um, online hunts are great if you're, again, a popcorn hunt. I know Michael Stather's $2 million hunt was going to be an online hunt. If that had gone on, because you never know what's going to happen on the internet, he lost his domain, you know. Um, and a lot of people said they, well, they claim they got www addresses out of his clues. <clears throat> And, of course, I think they might be roosters because uh, no one ever provided proof for that. <clears throat> but we did figure out a way to make a code wheel. Uh, we just never had anything to plug into the code wheel. But, um, you know, that hunt went belly up. Uh, it went belly up and they closed it. Whoa, it was less than a year. But, I mean, he had predicted sales of 2 million books and didn't even sell, you know, I don't even know if he got into the tens of thousands. His first hunt did make a lot of money. His second hunt just totally tanked, and that's why it got closed. And that's why I think hunts these days just aren't going to be very big. And that's what I thought about my hunt. It wasn't going to be big. No one would ever buy the book, and it would just last a long time because no one would work on it. So that's why I chose longevity. Um, <clears throat> so the other thing I was thinking about was... Uh, I, I posted this uh, on Facebook, but it's like, I want to know where, you know, I know there's a lot of web pages that deal, you know, the mysterious writing forums and Hinter Riches. Hinter, well, maybe not so much Hinter Riches, but um, like, uh, cat, what is it, the treasurecache.com or whatever it is. But they're, they're documenting all the current hunts. But I want to see a map of all these finished hunts, all these popcorn hunts, all these hunts that are done and over and where they were in the U.S. And then current hunts that we know the location of, you know, in the U.S. Like we know there's one in Indiana. We know there's one here. Um, just to see if there's a cluster, to see if there's a blank spot. Because that's what I want to do with my next hunt is do it in the blank spot. And <laughs> that sounded dirty. But, um, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And, and in my travels, I've done this. I started getting out the last couple of weeks, but like I said, I've been so sick. I've been missing a lot of work and stuff, uh, and my ankles aren't working anymore. And uh, it's hard to even get around that. That walk I took in the park Saturday was just about did me in. Uh, and going to work is nothing because I sit at a desk. If I do have to go in a factory, I can take a cart. And I kind of use it like a walker. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do that. But... Um, yeah, so I'm just like, uh, where can I do it? Where you know, I don't want to be a popcorn. If I do another hunt, it's going to be another hunt that I will plan on it lasting thirty to fifty years. And I just there's hard to find places like that anymore. Um, and maybe it's because I'm in rural Iowa. Um, but it's like I know there's another park I go to that has a covered bridge. Um, and there was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, benches along the way, you know, people memorial benches, and they there's little plaques on them, <clears throat> and even those got replaced. And it was really fascinating to go when I got back from Denver because I was visiting all my old spots. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm like, this used to be a wooden bench, and now it's a metal bench, same plaque, but it's a different bench, and. Even since I've been back in the, in the last year or two, I've gone out and I'm like, oh, this bench got replaced. And look at this isn't right. And they dug that up and it's just so hard. <laughs> and so anyway, I just wanted to get that out because that was asking me. And yeah, I did. I did plan on 30 to 50 years for all my locations and for the location where my token was hidden. Um, 30 to 50 years with the expectation that the places that I used would last 100 years. Um, and like I said, I've been surprised. Uh, 
there is one place I know it's a very small item and it's not secure to the ground. And sometimes I went there and, and like it had been moved um, off its foundation. You know, people playing in the park just bump into it and it tips over. <laughs> But I thought, I'm going to use that one anyway. Um, so that's one I got well documented. That's probably my my riskiest one. And then the one on the corner is a risky one. But um, I still think they're going to be there a long, long time. Uh, if not, I got pictures. And I'll just I'll post them somewhere public or put them on a video or say, hey, this one's gone. Um, but I just, like I said, I didn't think anyone would even be looking at it by now. Um, and if I hadn't posted on 12, I, I think that was like the catalyst. Um, after the one part got restored, because I never promoted or anything, but the one part got restored and I posted, 12 was still just a little bit active and I, in the new hunt section, I posted something like, hey, I just pushed my hunt out. And uh, yeah, it just kind of took off from there, but I had no idea. I didn't know these fenders. <laughs> These, all these fenners would take over and you know that it's funny because the, the thing i was talking to my friend and i was like you know if it wasn't for forest fen there might be more people buying my book and she's like well solve it and that's how i got into forest fen. i'm like well i'm gonna solve forest fen and then you know people buy my book but then like <clears throat> just like popcorn all these hunts billowed out of nowhere so yeah, uh, if I was going to do a popcorn hunt, and I, I don't want to say anything mean about anybody, but um, I, I don't know if I could do a hunt on donations. And I know people, you know, the AGK hunt, that was 90% donations. And, um, you know, I just like, <clears throat> I don't know, I just, I'd want a personal stake in it. And if you, if I did do a popcorn hunt, I might say, hey, here's a GoFundMe. Here's a place you can send donations, you know, like coins and, and knickknacks and stuff. And they'll all go into the pot. <clears throat> but um, I don't think that would work for a longevity type hunt. Like like a Fandango. Fandango's going to end here this month. And uh, no one's ever found it. It was out there for the long haul. Um, Whistle Pig's out there for the long haul. The Secret has been out there for the long haul. Um, that's kind of what I wanted my book to be. It was out there for the long haul. So we'll see what happens. Um, <clears throat> I didn't make the puzzles. I didn't think the puzzles, I didn't make them through. I just didn't think many people would be working on, <laughs> you know, um, I didn't think there'd be zoom meetings and stuff. So the puzzles, I mean, if someone was diligently working, I'm not saying it's 30 years of puzzles. I'm just saying the monuments and the places I put them were 30 to 50 years. And um, I don't know. We'll see how the puzzles last. And uh, anyway, that's all I have. Um, my polling place opens in a few minutes. Um, if it's anything like the last time I got to the polling place right at seven, because I was working nights at that point too. And there was probably three people there. So this is kind of a bigger election. I don't know what to expect, um, but I will not discuss politics. So that's the most I'll ever go into it. Um, religion and politics and Kate Hudson are the three things I'll never talk about. Um, so I'm going to go and you can see, it's kind of cool because I sat here and the sun rose and, and my dark video became a regular lit video. Um, and I could see myself now. So, anyway. Um, and it's only been 18 minutes. It's a lot of light in 18 minutes. And the first, when I first pulled up, it was pitch black. You couldn't even see my face. I sat, I actually sat here for about half an hour before I even started making this video. Um, I ate breakfast. Uh, and I did... There was a pin I've been wanting, and this pin has always been like $150, $175. I'm like, I'm not paying that much for a pin. But it was a pin I always wanted, and it came out for $20. <laughs> and it was just, I checked the buyer out. I'm like, this can't be right. You know, this is a $150 pin. And I was like checking the buyer out and checking everything. I'm like, this looks legit. And I was like looking at the pictures and, and trying to blow them up. And I couldn't see any flaws or anything. And, and the description said there wasn't any flaws. So... I said, boom, I put 20 bucks on it. Um, and I normally don't do that. I only allow myself to buy a pin on payday. Um, and I'm mid-payday right now. So I was kind of 
excited about that this morning. I was like, ooh, I scored. It was a score. I'm, I'm hoping when it gets here, it's it's like not a, not a, because uh, this pins are serious and there's uh there's counterfeits and there's stuff out there. So, you, and, you know, I'm hoping I can get it and I can make sure it's not a counterfeit. But still, I collect them to put on my display board. So even if it is a counterfeit, I'll just note that it's a counterfeit if I ever decide to sell it again, but put it up there. Um, anyway, that's all I have. Um, and I'm going to go vote now. It's going to take me about five or ten minutes to drive over there, and by then they should be open. So take care, guys. Vote. Uh, and I'm still trying to work on my hunt. I just I don't know if it's going to be an extension of the Beacon Star because I got a lot of stories left for that. Um, I just don't know how I can work that story into other locations. So I might have uh, Horace and Putnam leave leave Crescent and leave the safety of the city um, and have adventures on their own. But then that would kind of defeat the purpose of what the stories were about. But I don't know. <clears throat> I guess we'll find out. Um, have a good day, and I'll see you guys later.